Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Corp. So one of the most common requests that I get on my channel is to show Xbox 360 emulation. And honestly, it's not something that I've ever really prioritized. A lot of that has to do with Microsoft themselves. And that's because they do a pretty great job when it comes to backwards compatibility. If you have an Xbox One or one of the series consoles, you typically have access to a lot of the catalog from Microsoft themselves. And so it's never really made a lot of sense to me in order to have Xbox 360 emulation because we can just access it through a different Xbox Xbox console or through Game Pass or cloud streaming or things like that. But a lot of comments have also mentioned the fact that there are some exclusives that are only available on the Xbox 360 and they're not available, you know, through backwards compatibility or through Game Pass or things like that. And so I picked up a few of these to go with my old Xbox 360 console. And so in this video today, I'm going to show you how to take your original discs put them onto a hard drive, and then get those working in an emulator. And it's a lot easier than you might think it would be. And I gotta say, this video was actually a lot of fun to make because I hadn't logged into my Xbox 360 in years. And man, the feeling of nostalgia when I first logged in and saw everything again, it was just kind of crazy. I miss those little blades. Anyway, without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, let's talk about tools. You're gonna need an Xbox 360, but then also either an external hard drive or a flash drive to plug into it. This is where we're gonna store the games. Now, once we've plugged in that flash drive, the first thing we wanna do is format it so it'll work with the Xbox 360. Under settings and then storage devices, you should now see an option that says unformatted. So we're gonna format the drive. Just be aware this is going to erase the contents as well. So now we can just start adding games to that external drive. If you already have some games stored in your Xbox 360, it's as simple as just transferring them over in the settings. Or if you try to download a new game, just make sure you pick that flash drive when you choose your storage option. Right now, as of making this video, Portal 2 is the game of the month if you have Xbox Live Gold. And so if you have Game Pass, you should be eligible to download this game. So we're going to do it here. Now, additionally, if you're like me and have had an Xbox 360 forever, you can go through the game catalog too and then re-download games that you've purchased previously. There's a couple ways you could do this. For example, you could just go through the game roster list available on the Xbox 360 and then either buy or download again the game if you've already purchased it. Another option is to go into your download history and there you'll see a bunch of the games that you've purchased and downloaded previously. For example, over the years, I've done a pretty good job of downloading the game with gold that would come available every month. And so now what you can do is just choose to download those games directly onto the flash drive. Now this process can be tedious if you have a large download history like me. My oldest son was way into Lego Dimensions back in the day, so we have all those add-ons and they show up here. And I don't even want to admit how much money I spent on rock band songs back in the day, but they're all here in the catalog. Either way, yes, just go through your download history, you can probably find some hidden gems there. Now, if you have some physical discs you want to emulate, you have one additional step here. It's pretty easy though. What you want to do is go into settings, then system settings, then console settings, and you'll see a selection here for auto play. Make sure this is disabled. That means when you plug in a disc, it's not going to start the game automatically. From there, we can start adding and installing our physical discs. Now, Lost Odyssey is a four disc game, but I'm just going to do the first disc here just to do it for testing. Either way, once you add the game, it's going to show play game as an option. Instead, you want to press the X button to get into game details. And here, after a moment, it's going to pop up the option to install the game. This is going to take the data from the disk and then move it over to your hard drive. This was a great feature back in the day because it allowed you to boot your games faster. But here, we're actually just going to use it to grab all of that data. And that's it. You can go ahead and do that for all four disks if you'd like, or you can move on to your next game. Let's do Dead Rising here. And really, that's about it. You can move over all of your disk games and your Xbox Live Arcade games. However you want to get them over, it's either going to be downloading or using the physical disk. So now that we're done with that, let's move over to the computer and finish the rest of the process. Now the emulator we're going to use is called Xenia, and I'll have a link to this in the video description. There are two different versions you can use, the Master or the Canary build. I've heard the Canary build has a little bit better compatibility, so we're going to use that one here. All you have to do is just download it from the link. Now when you first download it, you may get an error. It says the file is dangerous. Just go ahead and accept the download. From here, we just want to unzip this file into its own folder. There's many ways you can do it, but I'm going to use 7-zip here. I'm in Windows 11, so I have to do Show More Options, then 7-zip, and then Extract To, and then the name of the folder. And that's it. This is the Xbox 360 emulator. And this thing is great. No BIOS needed or anything. You literally just open it up and then start your games. So let's go ahead and get those games from the flash drive. I'm going to plug it into my computer, and as you can see here, it's not really going to show anything when you first boot it up. So what you want to do here is make sure that hidden files are viewable. In Windows, you'll go up to the 
the view menu here, and then select show and then hidden items. From there, you should now see a hidden folder that is named content. That's where our Xbox 360 games are. You may have multiple folders here, just grab the one that's all zeros. And within here, there's gonna be a bunch of subfolders that have all of your games and other files. So if you wanted, you could actually just boot the games from this flash drive, but I'm gonna move them over to my computer so that I have them for safekeeping. And so as you can see, I got about 35 gigs to move over. So I'll fast forward this part and now we've got everything moved over to the hard drive. Now you're gonna see a bunch of numbers and you have no idea what corresponds to which game. Luckily, you can actually use some Zinnia tools to find out which game is which. Inside the Zinnia GitHub page, they have a game compatibility tool. And this is built around the issues tab within GitHub. What you can do is paste in these number files here and that will correspond to the name of the game. So from there, you can just go ahead and change the name of the folder so you know which game is inside. It'll take a second to kind of go through and paste through these numbers and then add the actual name, but just kind of go through it. Now, some of these numbers may not correspond to a game. They may be something like an avatar editor or something else that's been moved over. Since those aren't actual games or anything, we're just going to go ahead and delete those folders. We don't need them. But as you can see, I have quite a collection here. I have disc-based games as well as Xbox Live Arcade games. And some of these are ripped from discs directly and some of them have been installed from my Xbox 360 profile. Now, if you open up these folders, you're gonna find a different set of files within. For Xbox Live Arcade games, it'll just have one subfolder and within that should be just one file. And that file is gonna work fine in the Xenia emulator. You don't have to do any other work. It's good to go. Now, disc-based games may be another story. You may have multiple subfolders. Just go ahead and drill down into here and just find the one that has both a file and a folder that has this long string of code. The file itself should be around 44 kilobytes. This is basically a launch file and then within the folder are a bunch of data files that it's going to use. And so this is what we want to have for our disk-based games. And so if you'd like, you can go through these various folders and you'll find that yes, the Xbox Live Arcade games are just a single file, but the disk-based games will have both a file and a folder with the same name. Now, like I mentioned, the Xbox Live Arcade games can be booted directly. So let's go into the Xenia folder here and then open up that Canary file. And then we'll just go into file open and then pick your Xbox Live Arcade game. And for the most part, that's all you have to do. They're gonna work fine just like that. However, when you start up a game, you may notice that it's only gonna open up the trial version of the Xbox Live Arcade game. As you can see here, it says play trial. So let me show you how to change it from the trial version to the retail version. You'll wanna go back to that main Zinnia folder and then within there, you'll find a config file. And we just need to make one change within here. Now, in order to do that, we need to use notepad or a different text editor. So as you can see here, I'm gonna go to open with and then select notepad. Now this thing is chock full of different configurations we can do. And I don't recommend messing around with this unless you know what you're doing. But near the top here, you'll find a content section and then one that says license mask. For the most part, the way to play these Xbox Live Arcade games is to change it from zero to one. And really that's it. You can go ahead and save that file and then exit out of it. And now when we open up the game again, as you can see, instead of saying start trial, it says new game. And across the board, every Xbox Live Arcade game that I tried had this unlocked after I made this one configuration change that one time. So now let's talk about compatibility and how these games will play. First thing I should mention is that you may see some screen tearing in my footage, but that is actually having to do with my capture card. It has nothing to do with the Xbox games themselves. So if you have a monitor that allows you to do like free sync or things like that, you shouldn't have any problems when it comes to screen tearing like you're seeing in this footage. Anyway, when it comes to compatibility, I found that Xbox Live Arcade does a really good job. Just about every single game I tried worked exactly like I remember on the old Xbox 360. And so if you have some old favorites that you were hoping to try, like I have some fond memories of Tetris Splash right here, this would be a great chance to try it. However, I would caution to say that not every Xbox Live Arcade game is gonna run perfectly. For example, during the gameplay, Shadow Complex was just fine. However, during the cutscenes, you can see there are some texture issues. So you could check the GitHub page for the compatibility list for Xenia, and then you'll see whether or not a game is gonna have issues. And there will be some that won't work at all. For example, Aegis Wing was a game I liked back in the day. It was a free Xbox Live Arcade game. But as you can see, as soon as you boot it, it's going to freeze. So you'll have to close out of Xenia and try something else. And as you'll see, when we get to the disc-based games, the compatibility is an issue when it comes to Xenia. Not every single game is gonna play well. Now to play disc-based games, I recommend doing one additional step, which is to convert these files over to ISO files. This will give you just one file to work with, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to store these games. To do this, we're gonna use a program called God2ISO. Either way, you're just gonna to wanna to download this app here. And again, I'll have all this linked in the video description. And this will come in a compressed file format too. So we're gonna use 7-zip here to extract that file. From there, we should have the God2ISO.exe file. 
Now, just to clean things up, I'm gonna delete these zip files. So now we have an Xbox 360 folder with all of our games, our emulator folder, and then our ISO conversion tool as well. And the process to convert these over couldn't be simpler. You just open up the exe file, then navigate to whatever folder it is you want to use, then find that 44 kilobyte file that's attached to that other subfolder, and then choose wherever it is you want to save those files. Me, I'm just gonna throw them right back in that Xbox 360 folder, but in a folder called ISOs. And the conversion process this is actually super fast if you have a pretty good computer. For example, I am not speeding up this footage right here. It's actually going this fast. So it only takes about maybe 15, 20 seconds to convert each game. Now within that ISOs folder, you'll find that file, but it's gonna have that really long string of numbers. What I would do then is just change that file name to the name of the game that it actually is. And that's it. You can just go ahead and rinse and repeat until you have all of your disk-based games converted over to ISO files. Now to open up those files, all we have to do is open up the Zinnia folder, go to open, then find that ISO file that we want to launch and then boot it right up. And that's it. Now we know how to open up Xbox Live Arcade games directly through that file and then also to convert over the ISO file so that we're good to go. And so for the rest of the video, I'm just going to show off all of the Xbox 360 disc based games that I tested out for this project. And as you'll find, the number one issue here is compatibility. I think the Xbox 360 emulator just needs more time to mature. Many games would boot, but they would have graphical issues or they would freeze or crash as you're playing. Crackdown is a great example. This one would run for about two minutes before it would crash. It wouldn't matter what I was doing in the game, it would just crash after a while. So unfortunately, this is one that's not gonna be playable through this emulator, at least not yet. Now, some games won't actually get past the start menu. Here is the first Dead Rising game. And as you can see here, it'll actually go through the title menu and you can even start up a game. But after just a few seconds, the game is gonna crash. Other games tend to work pretty well. Lost Odyssey is a great example here. This one for the most part played flawlessly. I would see a little bit of texture mapping issues, but other than that, I didn't have any issues and I played this for about 20, 25 minutes. Now, like I mentioned with the Xbox Live Arcade games, you're gonna wanna check up on the compatibility of each of these games. Again, we can find that on the same GitHub issues tab that we were looking at earlier. And so if you are looking to convert over a specific Xbox 360 game, that's what I recommend doing. And so you can go through that issues tab and then find your game and then read up on the comments and see if maybe there's some sort of fixes that are available within there as well. And it's hard to say how each game is going to perform. For example, Portal 2 worked fine, but the one issue I had is that I couldn't see the text within the menus. And so that means that I don't know how to save a game or to load a game. And I also can't change to invert the Y axis. So I have to play this backwards too. And so although Portal 2 looks and plays really well, I'd have to go through and memorize all the menu options so that I know how to save or load a game. In cases like this, it's probably just better to play the PC version instead. Other games work just fine. Ace Combat 6 is a good example. This is an Xbox 360 exclusive, but as you can see, there are some texture issues with the water. You see those little triangles here on the screen. But if you're willing to live with those textures, then I think this might just be fine. The gameplay itself was great. The menus worked fine. So it's really gonna be up to you. Another game everyone asks about is Blue Dragon. This one I also bought a disc for and ported it over and this one worked pretty well. There were some moments within cutscenes where I would see some graphical anomalies like you see here on the screen, but for the most part, at least as far as the first half hour went, everything was playable. I also saw that the first Gears of War game was playable as well. This, by the way, was one of the first Xbox 360 games that I ever played. I really loved this game back in the day. And so when it comes to gameplay itself, this seems exactly like I would expect. But when it came to the cutscenes, you can see there are some text anomalies. This is very similar to what it looked like in Shadow Complex. So it's going to be up to you whether or not you would want to tolerate this, but this game is also available on Game Pass, so we have other ways of playing it. Other games like Virtua Tennis 2 had some really bad texture issues, so I don't think this one's going to be playable. In fact, I couldn't see the menus in this game either, so I just had to push the A button a bunch of times until I got to this screen here. So overall, I would say this game unfortunately is not playable. Other games like Ninja Gaiden 2, which was also an Xbox 360 exclusive, has some pretty crazy and hilarious graphical issues. As you can see, these eyeballs floating is just kind of creepy. And so unfortunately, this one doesn't seem to be playable. But this is one of those times where I do recommend checking out that compatibility list because a lot of people have been trying this game very recently and some have actually had some good success. Either way, with me, unfortunately, this game was definitely unplayable. Now, unfortunately, some of the other games that I was looking forward to trying, things like Too Human as well as Project Gotham Racing 4, both of these unfortunately crash right there in that first title screen, so you're not going to get far at all. 
But as time marches on, hopefully we'll get some better compatibility. And I gotta say, it's super exciting when there is a game that does play flawlessly. Forza Horizon, the first one here, works really well. In fact, I had forgotten how nice the graphics are in this first game. I'm so used to Forza Horizon 5, but man, even the first one looks great. And so yeah, if you're a big Xbox 360 fan like me, and you do want to play them on a computer instead of the Xbox 360 itself, you do have some options here. Just be aware that more often than not, you will see some sort of weird things happening, especially with a disc-based game. But it's very early in the development cycle, so I'm not surprised to see these issues when it comes to compatibility. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to run Xbox 360 games on the Xenia emulator. I was really surprised to find that it didn't require anything like jailbreaking an Xbox 360 or anything else like that. It literally is just a matter of moving over your files onto an external hard drive and then pushing them over to your PC. And so I think the future is really bright when it comes to Xbox 360 emulation in particular. So if there are some specific exclusives you want to play, it may come to pass that sometime in the future you'll have the option to play them. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.